this is our first webinar in the day. We have a series of five. So this is the outline of my presentation. And um, there are going to be two parts of it. In the first part, I'll do a very brief presentation of about 10 minutes to just tell you what we have. Then in the second part, I will log on live to these resources and you see how they are presented on the web and how you can have access to them. All right, so that will cover our online public access catalog. That is the library catalog to the print resources. Then we also look at some search engines, scholarly search engines versus the general search engines. We'll look at research for life gateway, Hinari specifically in that area. We'll also look at some other academic databases, both the ones we have subscribed to as a university and some that are freely available online for you. Then we'll also look at a particular collection of our e-resources that we named as discovery tools or databases where you can have access to either full text or bibliographic resources. Then of course, there are some COVID-19 related resources that publishers have released for free. I will give you access to some of those links also for those who are interested in COVID-19 research. All right, so what is our library online public access catalog or the OPAC. The OPAC is a bibliographic database of print or physical materials. What we mean by bibliographic database is that the online catalog does not contain the full text or the actual books that are in the library. Rather, it contains a description or metadata, publication details, for example, the author's name, the title of the book, edition, year of publication, publisher, and sometimes the content of that particular book, the table of contents or a brief summary that tells you what the book contains, all right? These are the details that you find about the print collections. So always remember that the OPAC is only a description of the materials that we have physically available in the print library, where you pull out books from the shelves and sit down on a table and read and make notes and then walk away. Or sometimes you may be allowed to check out some of the books uh, by borrowing with your library ID, all right? So that is what the OPAC is about. It does not give you the actual book. It doesn't contain eBooks, which have full content, no. It simply contains the publication details of the various books that we have physically in the library. Now, the interesting thing about the OPAC and why you might be interested in it is that because it is online, okay, it's an electronic system, you can log into it at any time and try to find out if there's a particular title in the library which is of interest. Maybe the lecturer has recommended a particular book and you want to find out whether the UHAS library contains that book. So even before you make any efforts to visit the library, you can, from the comfort of your home, check whether that particular title is available, all right? And during the demo, I'll show you how you can do that. Now, because you are far away, what you can also do is, if you realize there's a particular book <coughs> available, but you are far away, you cannot come down to the UHAS library, you can make a request so that some of the relevant pages that you want, or a range of pages, can be scanned and emailed to you, all right? Another important use of the OPAC is that Sometimes maybe you have read a particular book, you knew it was in the library, but you forgot to pick the details that you need to reference the book. Okay, the author's name, the title, publication year, and all those things. You didn't write any of those things down. So while you are back at home and you are doing an assignment or research, you can simply move into the OPAC and check for that same title. And all the publication details that you need to cite that resource will be made available plainly on the OPAC. So these are some of the reasons why you need the OPAC as an information system for retrieving content. Search engines come in various forms. As you read the section C of the information literacy course, you realize that I have outlined up to about eight different tools for online searching. 
And search engines are part of some of uh, these tools. But they come in various forms. Okay, there are general purpose search engines such as Google, Google, Yandex, Answers, and all those ask, all those that you have been using, general purpose. They are not focused on any particular thing. They try to index the entire World Wide Web, all right? Then, as scholars, as people who are interested in academic information or content, you should also be aware that there are search engines that are developed specifically for academic content. So for example, there is Google Search, but there is also Google Scholar. I hope many of you know about Google Scholar, all right? Now, Google Scholar is the scholarly version or the academic version of the Google Search Engine. So if you are looking for academic information, rather than just go into the general search engine Google and type and have millions of hits, most of which may not be relevant, if you use Google Scholar instead, Google, Google Scholar will actually filter the results and give you only those results that are of academic quality, either by browsing the repositories of other universities or some open access publications or other documents. And it is a very powerful tool when you are looking for uh, resources to support your research. Then of course, in terms of research, don't forget data comes in various forms. It is not only textual data that we are interested in so that it's like all the time you concentrate on uh, publications of text, articles. No, sometimes, let's not forget that data can come in the form of numbers, okay? We have numerical data. Data can come in form of still images or pictures, photographs. Data can also come in form of videos. So when we are looking for information for our academic and research work, let's not forget that they, these various forms of data, multimedia, images, are also parts of the information resources that we may need. For example, if you go through the course section that I am handling, the section C, you realize that I used a lot of these multimedia uh, elements to try and enrich your understanding of various topics. I used images, I used videos. All these are data sources. They are all means of learning or knowing about your problem or research idea. So Google image search also exists. I know some of you know only about Google, that's the end, but Google is a whole suite of several resources, okay? Millions of resources are available through Google. <laughs> and uh, if we have the time, there are many things that I have to introduce you to. So Google's search engine for images also exists. You simply have to type image.google.com, that's all. The same with scholar. If you want to go scholar, you simply say scholar.google.com. That's scholar engine. But apart from the general purpose image search in Google, there is also a biomedical science specific image search engine. It is actually by the National Library of Medicine of the United States, and it is called the Open Eye. Open Eye, that is open image. In fact, I'll be showing that it is actually collected within the Institute of PubMed Resources. And if I demonstrate that to you from our library e resources, you realize that most of the biomedical images that you want, for example, cancer imaging, maybe COVID images, and all manner of things, they are all available for free. And so maybe you are writing an assignment on the condition. For those of you who are in nutrition, for example, you want to talk about koshoko. Very good. You can find out if there's an image of Koshoko in the biomedical science database of images. All right. Okay. Hello, sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yes. Please, good morning. Good morning. Please, sorry for interrupting your class. I don't know if you can mute all the people who have their mics on. It's distracting. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. I, I need to. I need to. All right. There are even more people to admit. And please, uh, let's maintain the discipline of not unmuting ourselves. I have muted everyone. So please, uh, don't unmute yourself because the feedback is interrupting the class. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so can we move on? Thank you so much. 
All right, now I spoke about some of the subscribed resources that we have. One of them is HINARI. HINARI stands for Health Internet Network Access to Research Initiative. It is part of a family of five programs under the United Nations. You know, <clears throat> what the UN did was to negotiate with commercial publishers in Europe to uh, allow access, free access or subsidized access to most of their content by the developing world. And uh, Ghana, by our World Bank data, we qualify as a hippie country. So they have allowed us free access to most of these publications. Now, what this actually means is that there are articles that you would download in Ghana here for free, which South Africa will not have for free, which America will not have for free. It's the same article, you understand? But this is a special arrangement by the United Nations, looking at the economic capacity of various countries. And then the publishers have agreed to participate in this initiative that the UN has christened as Research for Life. Research for Life. So in the Research for Life family, we have Hinari, which is the health one that you has, has subscribed to. Then we have Agora, which is agriculture oriented. We have Owari, which is environmental science. Adi, which is about research and innovation. And then Goli, which is about uh, legal and social science issues. All right. Now, interestingly, since um, January 2018, they have allowed us access to all the five programs, irrespective of whichever one your university actually subscribes to. So as I'll be demonstrating in the GFE, you realize that even though you have to subscribe to Hinari, once you log on to Hinari, you are actually given access to all the other four programs as well. So for those of you who are interested in environmental science materials, you can use Oari. Those who are looking at legal issues, you can also use Goli. They are all available through the single login through Hinari. All right. Now, I spoke also about other databases that will help you to create your user accounts to access. One of them is the off-campus access that we have to University of Ghana e resources. And so I'll be giving you a manual on how you can create your library account and gain access to these e-resources. Then of course, as I mentioned, there are also free online resources. These are all under our e-resources tab on the library website, which we are going to have a look at in a jiffy. Of course, I also promised giving you access to some COVID-19 resources. And here are a list of them. The Lancet has its own resource center for COVID-19. The British Medical Journal has the same. The New England Journal of Medicine has also made available its COVID-19 resources or research materials for free. Emerald. Emerald publishes social science management and other related fields. It has also created a special space for uh, coronavirus research. Elsevier. Elsevier is an expensive publisher. They have also made available most of their uh, COVID-19 research for free. Then what is Cloa? They actually publish the up to date. They are more into medicine. They have also made available their free resources on COVID-19. So those who are interested in COVID research, of course, most of the publishers have released their resources on COVID-19 for free, the whole world. So you wouldn't really have any problem. Now, I spoke of all the resources that we have in the library electronically, which you can access through the web. But one and very important resource is your librarian, all right? For many of us, we look at the library, but not the librarian. <laughs> so we think about the books, we think about the journals, we think about all the other things, but not the human beings that are inside the library or that actually manage, collect these resources, organize them, and make them accessible. Now, your librarian is also a very, very important resource. All right? Unlike doctors, we don't charge you for consultation. So you are free to consult at any time on any of these issues. For example, if you are doing literature searching, maybe because of time, you are not having the time to sit down and do the search. I can tell you search is a difficult area. It's not a simple issue. So you can always ask help 
from the librarian to support you in doing your literature search, all right? Apart from literature searching, sometimes you may face access restrictions. You want to download a particular article and they're asking you to pay for it. You can consult your librarian to see whether that particular article is from a publisher that we have already subscribed to or a database that we already have under subscription so that they can give you access and you will download it for free, all right? You can also ask help when you are formatting your citations in fact, doing your research itself, the librarian is there to support you through the entire research life cycle. So don't forget that apart from the materials in the library, the human resource of the library is also one of the key resources that you can depend upon. All right, now, for most of our databases, there are certain ethics to observe. You know, for example, I mean that the Hinari from Research for Life by the UN, for example, is a special public UN and these commercial publishers. What it means is that the resources that the commercial publishers are releasing to us for free are actually not free, okay? Other countries are paying for it very highly. In fact, you can have a publication that costs about $5, others 10 15 20 Now, you may not be able to pay for that. And so don't forget that other countries are paying for it. And when you are in an online environment, don't share passwords, usernames, and all those things that identify us as a hippie country for which reason we are given free access. If you make those things available online through WhatsApp or any other communication channels and someone else picks it up from a jurisdiction that is not marked hippie like ours. What will happen is that once they identify that it is our uh, credentials that are being used, they will simply block us. And don't forget, Hinari, for example, it is an institutional access that we have. That means the password and username that I'll be giving you belong to the entire UHAS. It is not individually based. And so if any one of us makes a mistake of compromising it, means that you are going to deny the entire university access to these resources. All right. So in the part two, I'll rush you through a quick demo of our library e-resources. And uh, I hope that um, I can do that in just 10 minutes. Sir, good morning. No, I have a question on that one. Okay, please go ahead. Yeah, my name is Frederick. Uh, with respect to what you just said, so in the yes. case whereby, in the case whereby I'm still a student of you, has I probably yes. have travelled outside the jurisdiction of the country, maybe yes. to any of the country that uh, do not have free access. Yes. Does that mean that uh, I'm also restricted not to use the access, even if though I'm a student of you? Exactly. Exactly, as you can see here, one of the don'ts is that you shouldn't share this, post this, charge a fee, or look at the last one. You must not use Hinari or any of the Research for Life programs when you are outside of the country. Can you see it? Uh -huh. The moment you move outside the jurisdiction, your IP changes, okay? The IP that identifies you as coming from Ghana belongs only to Ghana. The moment you move outside Ghana and you connect to the internet, you are assigned the IP of that geographical jurisdictions. So the moment you try to use the login credentials of Ghana while you are in maybe the USA, they will see it as a compromise of our agreement not to use the resource in resource rich countries because in the US, they pay for it. So you are very right. Once you are outside the jurisdiction, anywhere in the country is allowed. Whether you are in the north, south, east, west of Ghana, you can have access to the Hinari resources. But the moment you move outside Ghana, you must not use them. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And Thank you. Sir. Yeah, you're most welcome. And now these are my contacts 
my email and my WhatsApp or the mobile number. You can always reach me if you have any issues, all right? Whether it is with a section, whether it is with practical research, whether it is when you are accessing a resource and you have restrictions, anything at all that has to do with your access to information resources electronically in the library, you can always contact me and I'll help or support you to overcome those access restrictions. All right, so let's go back to our live demo. And uh, you can all see the library URL. So this is the URL for the UHAS library website. Okay, library.uhas.edu.gh. So I'm going to log in. This is where we are. You can see library.uhas.edu.gh. And you will see Mr. Kofi right here. I don't know how many of you actually know him. This is the university librarian, Mr. Kofi. He has a message for you. Beyond that, you will see our navigation bar, all right? So right here, you can see this is a home about services, catalog, e-resources, library guide, blog, and contact us. Now, when you go to the contact us, you can actually send a message directly to the library about any difficulty that you have in accessing our resources and we will respond, all right? But today we are concentrating on the e-resources. Later, I'll come to the catalog. Now, the e-resources, as you can see, the moment you just point to it, it gives you a sub-menu that gives you all the groups. So for subscribed resources, you see that we have Kali, Hinari, Teal, and HS Talks. But let me explain that under these subscribed resources right now, only Hinari and HS Talks are actually active. Kalig and Teal are inactive, and we may remove them later from the system. <coughs> then you also have free online resources. These ones are not subscribed. They are open access content that are available online, but which are academic in quality, okay. so we have populated the website with them for you. Uh, did somebody call in? Did someone, someone wants to ask a question, right? All right, let's proceed. Then we also have the discovery tools or databases. Now the discovery tools are just like the free online resources. However, as the name suggests, they are more of discovery. They help you to find what is available. Not all of them contain the full text, but they guide you to where you can get the full text. We'll take a look at all of them. So let's start with the free online resources. The moment you click on free online resources, it navigates you to where we have populated the various resources for you. For example, you can see we have labeled them under journals. You have the Journal of Medical Internet Research, which is freely available online. Then you have Emerging Infectious Diseases. And I know that some of you are interested in uh, tropical or infectious diseases, that kind of issue. It's an open access peer reviewed journal. Then you have several other book sources. So the Doctor's Corner, eBooks directory, free books for doctors, all these are free resources available online. Hello, when you move sir. down, you can see that we have also categorized Others as health information portals and gateways. And you can see the EN link, for example. Um, those of you who are doing nutrition, okay, nutrition science in public health, this is a very important resource for you. <coughs> it contains books and journals published by the Nestle Foundation, all right? But a free registration is required you register for free and you'll be asked a few questions to determine, first of all, that you are coming from a developing country. Secondly, that you are actually a researcher or an academic in the nutrition sciences. And once they verify those facts about you, and so at this stage, I want to point out that your university email address, okay, 
your UHA's email address is very, very important. So those of you who haven't had yours activated, I think you need, maybe through your course reps, you need to actually make a case and let ICT get you access to your emails. I want to hope that every one of you already has the UHA's email and you are using it. Because also, that is how you'll be identified as belonging to an academic domain. All right? I do so so all I these are free resources available online. And, um, I don't know if that yeah, message is from otherwise I'll have to mute again. If the message is not for me, then I'm muting everyone again. All right. Thank you. Okay. Now, there are also archives. Archives are repositories, okay? They can be for institutions like universities, they can be for research centers, they can be for nonprofit organizations, they can be for governments. All manner of institutions can have their own archives. Now, these archives contain publications of facts. They can be government white papers, technical reports, research papers, uh, data, statistics on population growth, and all manner of things. All right, so we have also populated a number of archives here for you, including the WHO IRIS, okay? This is the WHO's Institutional Repository for Information Sharing. It contains a number of publications, books, and all manner of things. For example, I know a particular title, Basic Epidemiology by Bonita Ruth. Okay, all these publications are available for free through the WHO Institutional Repository for Information Sharing. So, these are all archives that you can actually look at. Then what about publishers? There are also publishers who have a lot of free materials available for you, all right? And I have populated here a number of these publishers, including Bioline International, Knowledge Enlarged, UNESCO itself, Biomed Central, PLOS, that's Public Library of Science, JSTAGE, OASIS, SEP, DAF Press, Intech Open, uh, National Academies Press, the IVIS is more on veterinary uh, medicine. All these are available to you for free when you come through the e-resources and go to the free online resources, all right? How about the discovery tools? Very interesting. You might want to play with these and see. PubMed, I believe most of you have been using it already, are familiar. PubMed Central contains their free full text. Knowledge maps. Okay, open knowledge maps. That one, I will actually suggest you try it and see how it works. It's so interesting. It helps you to discover a lot of open access uh, publications based on the databases PubMed and BASE. You know, BASE is multidisciplinary. PubMed is biomedical science focused. Then I already mentioned during uh, the presentation that there are image search engines. So for example, the open eye is the image search engine for biomedical science. Then Google image is also here. You can try it for other images. Of course, Google Scholar is also here as a discovery tool. Then Semantic Scholar, Microsoft Academic Dimensions. Now it's just a lot and a lot. Just have the time, play around, see all the databases that we have populated on the library website for you and see which of them suits you. And in case you really need help deciding which one to use, you can always contact me based on your research idea. I'll be able to tell you which of these are more relevant for you to use, all right? Good. Then what is left here? The subscribed. Let's try from HS Talks first. I have some hands raised. Please, uh, can you kindly just unmute yourself and let me know what I should know. Yes, those who raise their hands, about three people. Okay, sir, thank you. Good morning. Yes, boss. Um, I'm Stephen Okoku. Sir, I want to know if all these books could at, at a point in time be downloaded. Maybe if you want to download them. Is there a possibility that you, you'll be able to do? Okay. Now, all those free resources that I showed you, they are all open access. 
Open access means that they are free to download and use. All right? All those free resources that I showed you, every single item you find there, you can actually download them to your hard drive <coughs> and use because you don't have to pay anything for it. They have been paid for already by the authors. All right? So we are now moving into the subscribed content where, again, you can download items. All right? So this very first one, I'm not going to go into details because later we have a webinar on searching and all of that where I'll actually guide you and show you on how you can actually download content and all of that. Okay. All right. I hope I've answered Thank you. you sir. Yeah, you're most welcome. Okay, so please, let's just quickly finish with this uh, within just two minutes because I don't want to overstretch the time. Now, this is HS Talks. It gives you access to the biomedical collections. You can see what is happening right now. It tells me I have limited access. The reason is that I am at home. I'm not on campus right now. I'm logging on from outside campus. Now, if I were on any of the campuses of UHAS, before clicking on HS Talks from the library website, it will give me full access directly. Okay? But in order to have full access, whether you are on or off campus, the moment you click HS Talks, you should follow the procedure. And whatever area of the field you want to find out, there are Nobel laureates here that have given lectures which are video recorded and you can play full length on various difficult topics, all right? So that is about HS Talks in brief. I hope that you will try it yourself. And as I promised, later during our search webinar, I'll show you details of this. All right, so let me go back. And the last item under subscribe content is the Hinari. So for Hinari, once you click, you'll be asked to log in. And when you click on login here, because this is a video recording and I'll be putting it online, I will not be sharing the login details with you. Okay? But I will place a password on your course reps uh, WhatsApp so that you can share with the rest of you. So once you have entered the username and password, simply click login. And you can see, as I said, that they have given us access to all the five programs despite subscribing to just Hinari. So currently you can see all the five programs, Agora, Hinari, Adi, Wari, and Goli present. But we are interested in Hinari. And so once you click on Hinari, this is how it shows. You can actually browse journals and books by this letter, which represent the first letter of the name or title of the journal or book. Or you can actually conduct a search. When you click on the search button here, it will open the salmon search engine for you to conduct any search at all across all the programs in the Research for Life domain, all right? So for example, maybe we are interested in COVID-19 research. So we say COVID-19, COVID-19 and Ghana. Let's see whether there's any publication on COVID-19 from Ghana, all right? Oh, wow. So there are already publications by Harriet Afran Bonfu, Adolfina Adulati. You can see over 200 results. So limited spread of COVID-19 in Ghana. Compliance audit of selected transportation stations in the greater Accra region. Excellent. So already over 200 publications coming out of Ghana, responding to COVID-19 pandemic in Ghana. That one by Kenu Enes, Rimpon Joseph. Whoa, whoa, our people are doing well. You see? All right. So you could use either a search or you browse through particular journals. If you know a particular journal, okay, you can go straight to that particular journal. 
if you don't know any journal in mind, then you can just use your search function. All right. Now I want to pause here. And uh, our next uh, webinar was supposed to be 7.30. But looking at the time we have consumed here, I'll push it a little to 7.45. Or else I'll talk with the course reps to see what time we should start the second webinar. Thank you very much for being part of this first webinar. I will now stop sharing my screen and invite questions from you. Only two minutes of questions so that we can all break. And then your course reps will communicate the time for the next uh, webinar, which should not be too long from now. And then we'll proceed together. Yeah, Thank you very much. Yes. Hello. Yes, yeah, sir. So, so, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, my name is David Kwame Uh yes. You said uh, when you are even in the house and you need a page in a book, it can be scanned and sent to you. Yes. And I want I want to find out whether that one comes with a cost. And uh, secondly, I I used to use Hinari. Okay. And it was linked to uh, Mendeley. Okay. I wanted, I wanted to find out whether it's still linked to it because sometimes without uh, mentally you can't do the reference list and all those ones. I wanted to find out whether it's still linked to it. Thank you. Oh, okay. Okay, don't worry. I understand what you mean. So that means if you want to explore citations and all of that. Don't worry, exactly. we'll explore that. We'll explore that when we are in the afternoon session dealing with the Mendeley uh, reference management. Oh, okay. All right. And the other issue... No, it doesn't come at any cost. This is a scan, okay? We simply scan and send to you electronically. The only okay. cost element is where maybe you come to the library and you want to make a photocopy, okay? If it's a physical photocopy, that one, because paper, toner, electric, all manner of things are involved, you will be charged a very okay. small fee. But for the scanning, because we don't really use any other resource, uh, in terms of printing all of that. So there is no cost to scan an email to you. Okay, thank you, sir. You are most welcome. Hello, sir. Yes, welcome. Bye, yeah, thank you. Um, please, sir, I would like to know whether the order of the search results has any relevance to the information you, you are looking for. When you search for the information, the order. Yes. Mm -hmm. You said the order. Or the order. Order, order of the... Order. the, the uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, it's a very good question. Yes, it does. And uh, during the afternoon or rather later in the morning when we are doing actual searching, I'll show you some of those examples. You can actually set it yourself, okay? You can decide whether you want your results to be ordered by relevance, which is what most of the search engines use. By default, they will give you the results in order of relevance to your search query. But sometimes you can decide, well, I want the most recent publications first. Most recent publications first doesn't necessarily mean most relevant to your request. You understand? So those ones are things you yourself can adjust, but it is best to leave it at relevance so that you know that the very early results that you see are more closely related to your request than the later ones. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right, George, Mohammed, Sule, I can see your hands up. Hello, sir. Yes, George. Yes. Uh, please, uh, my, my concern has to do with two spaces. Uh, the first one is under the e-resources, there were yeah. about four things, including that of you have space. But yeah. by my understanding, it's like you didn't uh, explain on that. And then the second one has to do with during our initial orientation uh, by school management, the yeah. academic uh, board took us through something like you have past questions are available in the library. So how can one assess them at a distance? Could those ones also be scanned up? Okay. Now, with the first one, Thank um, you. I mentioned I mentioned that some of the resources listed there 
are projects that are ongoing. We have not yet launched them. So for example, the UHAS space has not been launched, but it's a project that is currently under development. And that is why I skipped those ones. Uh, I also mentioned that some of them are inactive, like Calig and Teal under the uh, subscribe resources, all right? So that is why I didn't mention those ones. I also mentioned that some of them will be removing them from the uh, site because they are no longer relevant. Then to your second issue, Yabri is currently through the acquisitions department trying to collect uh, all these past questions. But as we speak right now, that database is not available. That is a fact. So it may be at the departmental level, but from the central library, we will not be able to give you access to the past questions. I'm sure uh, before the year ends, we have been done with that collection development also. However, the past questions are actually currently available at your school library. That is at the School of Public Health Library. And so specifically at your school, you can actually make a request to the library and you will be given scanned images of whichever uh, past questions you are looking for. Or if you do call at the library physically, you could actually make photocopies of some of these past questions.